Class example 1.12 asks us to find the domain of a function given its equation, and asks us to do so without graphing. Looking at examples a, b, c on this slide, we see a square root function, we see a quartic function, and we see an absolute value function. Right away, we may feel a little bit intimidated, but it is important to recall what we learned a bit earlier. When we're asked for domain, we simply ask ourselves, will anything lead to a restriction here? Is there a possible division by zero? Is there a square root of a negative radicand? Or are we taking the log of a zero or negative argument? And the answer is, in part A, we could have a negative radicand. But in part B and C, there is no instance of square rooting, no instance of division, and there's no logarithmic function. So right away, we know that B and C will not have restrictions. Let's walk through this one part at a time. In order to determine the domain of part A, we stated that the radicand must be positive or equal to zero. We then isolated x by adding 3x to each side and dividing by its coefficient of 3. This said that x must be less than or equal to 5 thirds. Here, to represent the discontinuous data, we will also state that x must be an element of the real numbers. In interval notation, that means we can be anything from negative infinity up to and including 5 thirds. Note, in the first step where we added 3x to each side, had we subtracted 5 instead, the subsequent step would have been to divide by the coefficient of negative 3. When you divide an inequality through by a negative value, you must change the direction of the sign. So don't forget that one. In part B, we want to avoid being distracted by recalling all of our knowledge of polynomial functions, and cortex in particular. It's true that the range might not be all real numbers here, but the domain is. There's no value of x will be problematic, because again, there's no division by zero, no square root of a negative, and there are no logarithmic functions involved. The exact same logic applies in part C. The three examples shown on this slide all involve division. That is to say they are all rational functions. So we'll start them all off the same way, by saying that the denominator cannot equal zero. Because if it does, we performed the cardinal mathematical sin of dividing by zero. Here, 5x plus 7 cannot equal 0. Therefore, x cannot equal negative 7 fifths. There are two ways to write this, set notation and interval notation. As we can see, because this domain is in two parts, interval notation would require us to use the union symbol. Therefore, we could not ask for this in the Math 3-1 curriculum. However, it's still worth understanding. We can see graphically how there's a left part and a right part of the graph, with a vertical asymptote separating them. Identifying the x-coordinate of this vertical asymptote, we should find negative 7 fifths, or negative 1.4. In part e, we again begin by stating that the denominator cannot equal zero, 
That is the only possible restriction from this example. If x squared minus 9 cannot be 0, then x cannot be positive 3, nor can it be negative 3. We could write this in set notation by saying that x is less than negative 3, between negative 3 and positive 3, or greater than 3. But it's sufficient to just say not equal to positive or negative 3. Those two numbers could also be listed, x not equal to negative 3, comma positive 3. You don't have to use the plus or minus sign. Again, writing an, inter uh, writing an interval notation requires us to use the union symbol. In fact, here we have to use it twice because there are three sections to the graph. So this is again beyond the scope of this course. In part f, it's worth pausing for a moment. We start by saying that x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. When we try to solve for x, we find that we're taking the square root of x squared, which is x, and the square root of negative 1, which is not defined in this course. Often, a step like this would cause us to believe there is no solution. But in this example, it's not that there's no solution, it's there's no solution as we search for a restriction or non-permissible value. Otherwise said, there's no way that x squared plus 1 could equal 0, and so it actually has no restrictions. This means that the domain of the graph will be all real numbers, which we could equally write in interval notation as from negative infinity to positive infinity. I want to take a moment to note that while we can do all these problems, or we can determine the domain of all of these problems without a graphing calculator, for the range it's not so straightforward, and we would at this level consider the graph.